the time is finally here. Guess what we're doing today? That's right. We're going to be reviewing the beautiful Kraken V3 Pros. Wireless. Very, very great headset, by the way. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my stream. Or my stream. Sorry. Not my stream. We're not live. Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Braven. I'm going to give you the full rundown of this headset with EQ settings as well for a couple games because I'm still dialing it in. It's a, it's a heavy process. I'm trying to get past the haptics, like like EQs with the haptics. Um, I do have experience with EQs in the past for people that do know my channel uh, with the Black Shark V2 and V2 Pro. Um, but yeah, I'm here to just give you guys a full on rundown of my, my personal opinion about this headset and, uh, give you a little bit of a setup guide tutorial and my custom EQs to kind of work with for now until I come out with another video that works on these, uh, EQ settings for this headset. So hope you're all doing well today. Um, all I ask, please, please, I'm literally at 300 subscribers away from YouTube partnership. Um, it would be, it would mean the world to me if you guys could sub to my channel. I truly appreciate it. If not, it's fine. I understand, you know, but again, it doesn't cost anything. You click that button. It helps me out a tremendous amount, please. I'd appreciate it. Um, I'm also full-time streaming on YouTube now instead of Twitch. So that would mean the whole world to me to get that going and, and keep that motivation going to keep doing what I do. Um, normally I'm an esports competitor in a sense, um, a lot of history with Warzone, a lot of history, well, well, somewhat history of Apex Legends and a lot of history of Battlefield. Um, so I've been trying to kind of keep grinding those games out and, and get something going with that. Um, so definitely means the world to me to help me continue growing my dream and my passion. Um, also, as you can see here too, well, for the most part, I rock razor, razor, keyboard, razor, um, keycaps, razor, mic, razor, headset, razor, bass stand, can't see it right here, but headset stand, razor, everything's razor, backup, razor, backup, razor, mouse, you know, like I got literally everything razor here pretty much for the most part so for the mouse pad razor like everything so um i have a lot of experience with razor and uh i just a big fan of the products um i believe that they truly are doing something special um especially with the future going forward with the v2 or v2 and v3 series um now it's the v3 series v3 series coming out and they have been making some strides going forward and i think the v4 series will definitely put them at the top and i and rightfully so um but yeah i'm just here to show you guys about the unboxing process of this headset and obviously my review on it for my roughly a month of, of use on it and uh hopefully you do enjoy like i said please all the support it's truly appreciated so without further ado let's get it going okay so a couple days ago i did a hand cam stream so obviously when i was gaming i was using the hand cam of how i set up my mouse and keyboard which actually this is probably a better angle of my hand cam than what i had for the stream but it's okay but i wanted to show you guys how the box looks like this obviously you can see the stickers here too um i'm doing a giveaway at a thousand subscribers as well it's going to be a black shark v2 wired headset and a basilisk v2 mouse it would be this mouse right here so please if you follow and subscribe to my socials they'll be in the description down below um i will definitely be or you'd definitely be in the running to get that so i truly appreciate it. but also keep a lookout for you know brave and merch and stuff that's going to be coming out this is a coffee mug and uh you know the stickers right here i mean we're working on it. it's all a work in process and obviously i have a t-shirt too but i'm not wearing it right now i'm just trying to get a little warm anyways so here we go we got the box okay so this is how the box is going to come um online it was technically for the first two months of this release was a razor.com exclusive which made it really rare uh but it's a really really good headset nonetheless um but now you are available to pick it up in stores they are starting to release it to stores so that's very good for the consumer base so if you're thinking about getting this uh, I definitely, definitely recommend it. However, I'm going to tell you its caveats here in a minute. But anyways, so we obviously got the unboxing part here. You just open it up as so. The headset will go in there, obviously. And then it comes with a charging cable and a dongle. Um, again, it's all plugged up already. So I was just giving you guys the idea of the box behind it. So right here it says it is for PC, Mac, PlayStation, Switch, Xbox, and smartphone via 3.5 millimeter analog or analog plug-in. That's something you got to remember when you are buying this. If you're using it for a console, um, there's always going to be a, a a kind of a downgrade in quality when you're buying it for a console specifically because it's not necessarily made for specifically for that console. It's just compatible with it. Um, if you're looking for a headset specifically for console use i would recommend looking up what console headsets they have first because the way they develop those is with the licensing of those companies that have it say for example playstation and xbox so when you buy the headset for that obviously uh you'll get the quality much more dialed in for that specific console based off of the licensing for it and whatnot so 
Anyways, uh, still a good headset to get though. Nonetheless, it's, you could if you want this for your Xbox or PlayStation, it'll still be good. It just won't be as good for P. It would be much better on a PC than those consoles and stuff. But it'll still be good nonetheless. Uh, Hyperspeed wireless technology is probably you know one of if not the top tier wireless uh, features in a headset um, or in, in any gear really uh, through Razer's products. Um, they're top tier in terms of fast response times and everything and how how directly uh connected you are to your computer for the most part so that's why this is really highly rated and then you got the hypersense technology which is this is one of the reasons why i've been trying to uh, push this headset to people of buying this headset because it actually brings in a different type of not only immersion factor but a sense awareness factor to gaming competitively which is actually really really cool especially because of the way these drivers are developed and which i'm going to get to right here so these are the razor triforce titanium 50 millimeter drivers these are the exact same drivers that were uh put inside the black shark v2s and uh v2 pro and they are highly rated as well it's it's to me it's a gaming obviously it's still a gaming headset through and through but this is as close to a audio file quality gaming headset you could get obviously without spending the premium price or having a dac amplifier to boost those audio sounds which even if you get a deck uh, audio amplifier you'll just make this headset that much better but besides that you don't need one obviously um but these drive force titanium drivers are really highly highly rated and so i do recommend it so if you don't know what hypersense is for someone that's new uh hypersense right here you can see um it's kind of blurred out a little bit there we go hypersense is a uh vibrating sound inside or vibrating uh sensation inside the ear cups so i'll pull up the headset right now so you can kind of get an idea what i'm talking about here so when you have this headset put on, uh, they have what they call the hypersense. Obviously, they'll have the stamp right here if it's hypersense or not. Um, they are really premium, premium built too, so they do feel much sturdy and strong. Very, very comfortable. But uh, the hypersense is like a vibration that goes off in with a certain frequency that comes to this headset. So obviously, you see here you have the RGB uh, shining on the ear cup. It's kind of hard to pick it up on the camera. There we go. Um, you got the RGB shining on the ear cup. You got the uh, whole design. I don't think that's like gives any kind of audio, uh, like open back audio sound. So that's not like it's just a design. So just ignore that. But uh, other than that, it feels very, very premium in the hand. The uh, leather is very, very comfortable. Um, and they also got this like weird felt on the inside of the ear cup. As you can see right here, it's like this is leather. I'll see if I can point it a little better. But you can see that. The inside of the ear cup is leather. It's got a nice depth to it. It's got the perfect round uh, shape of the ear cup instead of like an oval shape. Kind of the Black Sharks, I felt like was like a little bit of a different feel to it. But these got a nice uh, round ear cup shape. And uh, you got the cloth inside right here where this cloth is like, it feels like a, if you ever wore like a... Uh, stretch band on your arm i forgot what they call them, compression compression sleeves it feels kind of something like that or like uh you know like a workout type uh comforting cloth it's weird like it's stretchy cloth but it feels so comfortable they also have cooling ear gel inside here too so when you're using it your your ears will actually be uh not sweating and, and it feels actually really comfortable they're really 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 comfortable probably one of the most comfortable headsets i've worn out there also you got the razor logo on top classic is what they've been doing with a lot of their headsets exactly like this but it's leather all around which is something that is kind of new to what they do but it's it's leather but it's got the memory foam up top here so it's very very comfortable it's very very soothing on the head and then the the uh, ear sides right here the um uh, the hinges i guess you could call them they don't the only thing that they don't have is the left and right tilt so you can't put these around your neck and tilt them, which is, I mean, I guess it's understandable for the way they're built because this is like a uh, very hard metallic, like it's like a metal build. Like you can't bend these things if you wanted to, but obviously, you know, you want to take care of these as much as possible. These are very, very nice. And then they have the adjustable headband sizes by numbers. So you could literally put it to a certain amount. Mine's at four right now. So I'm going to keep it at four um, on both sides. Actually, this one went up a little bit. I don't know why, but yeah, so it just goes up and down like that and it's held by like a hinge thing where it just kind of goes in and just kind of snaps into spot right there and other than that it's a really really good headset now the only thing that i haven't been able to test and, and get dialed in yet is the microphone because obviously as you can see i use my own microphone so definitely will be working on that but uh keep an eye out for that video too when i get the update video out we'll get the microphone dialed in i know a lot of people even ask for that with the black shark v2 pros they're kind of tricky to get it dialed in but once you get them dialed in they're actually really really good start with the uh the audio sound so obviously 
you this is how you'd want it set up because I'm running Windows 11 just FYI so this is how you'd want it set up you want to run THX spatial audio as your main speakers this is with pretty much any uh, THX spatial audio qualified headset to get the best audio quality and then you're going to run run your mic from your headset obviously it would be the Kraken V3 Pro or if you have your external mic it would be that but obviously we go to more sound settings we pull it up like this as you can see here I have a lot of my other audio hidden but this is because these are the ones that are active so what you should do to see all that is show disabled audio devices and you can see everything that's disabled here so obviously I have two uh, monitor audios disabled and I have the THX spatial audio disabled here um, real tech digital output is the computer audio so we're just gonna keep that um, obviously and then you got the Razer Kraken V3 Pro you want that set to default communications device and then the THX spatial audio as your default device and then you go to recording obviously for you guys it'd be different because again if you're using the headset microphone you would just keep it as default device here and not everything else would be disabled unless you have a microphone so that'd be your default device for your recording tab and then obviously you want to check too with audio quality to make sure you're running at the highest quality you want to go to properties go to space or oh, sorry it's not yeah right there advanced and then you're going to make sure you got the highest bit and uh hertz of audio you could have obviously this usually you sometimes you get which i call like the audio lottery in a sense where you sometimes can get the option to go even higher than i had 24 bit at one point uh but with this headset specifically it's always been 16 bit with the black shark v2s i've been trying to get those uninstalled reinstalled just to see if i catch that luck again and get that audio quality because it does actually make a little bit of a difference it actually sounds a little bit crisp but this is still really good nonetheless and i think since i've had this headset i haven't been able to switch out of this so well actually this was under yeah this was under uh, T uh razor crack and v3 pro but under uh the uh thx spatial tab obviously you can see you're only going to ever have these options period and obviously you're going to want to go with the dvd quality so other than that that's pretty much it with that um so obviously you just go back to show enabled things so it just cleans it up a bit makes it more simplified and there you go you're ready to go and that's how it's set up simple as that so then now obviously we're going to go into the web pages so that way you guys can kind of do your research on what's going on so what i wanted to show you is obviously more of the details of the headset um you get into here as you see a little bit more of the the, the custom designs off the razor website and how they're designed in there um very very clean aesthetic headset it doesn't do justice in this picture honestly it really doesn't um it looks and feels much more premium and better than the website actually shows as you can see here like the band looks kind of cheaper it doesn't look as it's it's not like that cheap as you can see you can compare it to the picture there like um, obviously i have some wear and tear of the of the headset resting on a on my uh headset stand here but it's actually much thicker and it just looks a lot nicer in person um it just looks more premium it actually fits really really nice compared to the picture um they do have the left and right uh audio parts right here so you can see which headset part, part goes where about it. it should be more common sense than anything but just in case if you really needed it it's right there left and right audio um the frequency response is what i was talking about with the haptic senses so as you can see here it says 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz now what's different from this hypersense headset versus the first edition with the nari ultimates is that the nari ultimates only had one frequency Frequency. this goes up in frequency based on audio sounds and cues uh in terms of distance in terms of loudness in terms of you know all that all that good stuff you know it gives you literally like if you're shooting your gun right next to you hey, you're gonna feel that gun right next to you but if you hear someone shooting in the distance you'll sometimes feel the direction of not only where it is because i know what the other headset it was just one loud for if you had a certain frequency it's going off but this is if you hear that gunshot in the distance you're hitting you're you're like, and you barely hear it your ear couple also vibrates so you would still get another uh awareness factor out of it and that's what kind of throws me into this like big like uh how do you say it like an urge to want to dig into this headset because it actually gives you a competitive advantage for the most part and at the same time you could enjoy a games with just amazing audio quality and and uh the, the haptic feedback just put more of an immersive feel to it. it's actually definitely a cool experience and the, by far this has probably been my favorite headset in terms of audio quality and and the haptics part of it but uh obviously i still got a love for the black shark v2 it's really neck and neck right now until i get things more figured out but at least we'll get you off or up and running if you do decide to buy or already have it so uh sensitivity are we sorry we skipped the pedance impedance it's got a thousand kilohertz which is good or sorry one kilohertz which is good which is a thousand um 32 ohm that's really really good that's a really good audio quality and it's always been uh pretty good with their 
their uh, up the, or the most recent drivers in their headsets, which is the Triforce Titanium. They're like really high quality for the most part. Driver size, 50 millimeters. The sensitivity is 96. Uh, I don't even know how to read that, <laughs> but I'm not going to try. Uh, the ear cups are oval ear cups, but they actually more like, uh, what is it, a cylinder type thing? It's a circular, circular ear cups. It feels more like that compared to the Black Shark V2 Pros. As you can see here, I can pull out the Black Shark V2 Pros and compare the type of cups here. So I pull out the Black Shark V2 Pros, and as you can see, the difference in the cups alone, it makes a massive amount of difference in how you're getting your headset. It is definitely not the same thing in any way, shape, or form. That is more of an oval. This is, or sorry, this is more of an oval. And this is more, I mean, you could see the oval in there, but when you have the headset on, it feels more like a circular. It has definitely got an oval type shape in terms of the ear cup, but it is major ugh, majority circular <laughs> working on working on that one <laughs> working on how to word that one uh inner ear cup 62 millimeters just in case you really need the actual specs of that uh it is usb a wireless and then 3.5 millimeter analog those are the connection types which that would be the dongle that's sitting right up here uh cable length is not that big it says 4.27 feet it, it definitely feels like uh i would probably even say mm maybe maybe four foot at the mark maybe even a little less uh the one thing that bugs me which i'll get to all the things that do bug me about this headset in a little bit but one of those things that bugs me is obviously the, the cable length to the headset that does bug me um but it's still okay it's manageable but in other other people's instances it probably won't be um but you might be able to get a extension cable or something if it really looks that bad so the microphone style is a uh, detachable hyper clear super cardioid now the problem that people have with these these mics it's not that it's a bad mic it's just hard to dial in these mics and that's because of the super cardioid it picks up a lot of audio and it makes a lot of audio sound really muffled or, or, or very high pitched and so it's really hard to dial those in unless you really balance out those those eqs for those those microphones so it's actually a really really good microphone but you have to really work on it this headset is not for everybody in terms of like plug and play it's more of like plug and you know dial in and get it proper because you're getting a high quality headset for the price you're paying and you have to really make sure you dial those in so uh pickup patterns unidirectional the microphone frequency response 100 hertz to 10,000 or 10 10,000 hertz um microphone sensitivity is uh negative 42 by three decibels uh virtual surround sound encodings thi spatial audio you can see here the volume up and down which i haven't talked about is right here on this little knob so you could obviously go in here and just turn it down turn it up i noticed that when i'm gaming i sometimes like rub it on accident but that's not like that big a deal it's just the way i turn my head it doesn't happen often it happens like once every couple days of streaming um where i accidentally hit it or when i'm taking the headset off and i'm just doing it really fast and sometimes it gets like that so uh it does have a mic mute function so it's that button this button right here on the back it's on the back side of it so once you learn where the placements are you could just plug unplug and plug the mic mute button and uh yeah that's about it if you're using the headset with the mic on obviously you can mute yourself um battery life says up to four now this is one of the caveats here i'll start getting to the caveats after i show all this but uh like i said i have more caveats with this battery life says up to 44 hours with haptics and lighting off up to 11 hours with haptics and lighting on I'm definitely going to give you more information about that because that is not correct by my testing at all and that is one of the caveats i have for sure uh but that's why the charging cable does come in handy a little bit but at the same time it does kind of have some caveats too so obviously lighting has razor chroma rgb and then compatibility right here i'll say pc it's wireless and wired so obviously that's the compatibility with that playstation is wireless and wired nintendo switch is wireless in docked mode and wired mobile devices wired and xbox wired so xbox and mobile devices are you're gonna have to get the wired plugged into it in order for it to work which is the 3.5 millimeter uh, audio cable so for xbox and mobile devices would i recommend it probably not not the wireless version obviously uh but i would recommend getting the wired version because then i think it's automatically compatible with your xbox or mobile device um but the mobile device uh i could also say too for sure that i've plugged in my mobile device with a dongle that extends the uh dongle itself into the phone and it has worked wirelessly 
and I have had test this when I first got it even too. And uh, I could confirm that it does work wireless, but it's just more of a complication of how you set up your ma your, your cell phone, depending on how you're using it. Uh, Nintendo Switch, I haven't tested it, obviously, and PlayStation, I haven't tested it. So, obviously, PC is where I am. So, anyways, that's the run-through of the Razer Kraken V3 Pro off their websites. And as you can see here, you could buy these at Micro Center, Best Buy, GameStop, or Amazon. So... Now that they're selling it in stores, that's the most beautiful thing, too, because you could probably even find better deals on it. You could probably find uh, certain discounts. You could probably find more availability close to you instead of waiting for the shipping. But, uh, yeah, other than that, this was a Razer.com exclusive, which made it a rare headset for a while, which I got it during that time. It was actually really cool. But now it's actually even cooler to see that they're releasing it to the public. So software and firmware updater so i always talk about this in every video now because i just want to make sure that people understand that if you're having any kind of issues with your razor products in general sometimes the firmware is out of date or sometimes they update it or they, they release the product and they're working on a firmware to better dial in the settings of what's going on with all the issues and whatnot so keep an eye on this obviously my camera's in the way so forgive me for about that but uh just as an example here i'll show you under headsets and audio it's not here yet so we're waiting on that but you could see inside this list like if i scroll through a little bit you can see past the camera uh you can see like the blackshark v2 and v2 pro have had one the electro v2 the kyra for xbox kyra pro for xbox kraken tournament edition and so on and so forth thresher for the ps4 thresher 7.1 so there they do come out with updates and firmware to your products so if you're buying this headset specifically keep an eye out for this updater just keep an eye on it pop it up once in a while this has been last updated uh, january 12 2022 uh so there hasn't been any solidified firmware update yet but to keep an eye on it because it's de they definitely have to update something eventually especially with the what i believe is caveats of the headset and i'm sure they're kind of aware of it so and last but not least when you buy a product Again, this is not a big problem as it used to be before with Razer. I know a lot of people have always said, oh, Razer's uh, unreliable or breaks down. Da, da, da. That's old, old back in the day before the V2 and V1 series Razer is just a baseline Razer series. That was because they weren't like dialing in their product quality. Now it's a lot better. So I don't need to hear anybody try to give me their opinion about Razer because if it's in the past and especially in the past from a long time ago, Keep it to yourself because that's just the old razor. It's like the same thing with Logitech. Logitech still puts armor on 20 mil switches, which is literally like the cheapest switches you could put in an in expensive mouse. Now, is it going to work? Yes. Is it going to perform pretty well? Yes. Is it going to last? Probably not. Are you going to have double click issues? Most likely. So in those instances, yes, like uh, they've had issues and I know Razer does still come up with issues once in a while, but the best thing about this is their warranty and they do have really good customer support as long as you do it right. So obviously my best uh, opinion for getting into uh, customer service experience is obviously call them at those locations that they offer on here. I believe it's under support. They do have a list of numbers you could call for all that. And then obviously you could go with the uh, RMA status, the RMA, your headset or whatever's going on, order, return, replacement parts, so on and so forth. But they offer a two year warranty. And I mean, honestly, if you just take it back to, or send it to Razer, they will literally just give you a brand new headset right off the bat. Cause they know that they're just gonna, it's, it's just better to give you a new headset for customer care. So I'm not gonna say that that's what they're gonna do exactly. I'm not gonna say what they're gonna do, but I'm just gonna say most likely they'll do that because most likely, they really care about the customer service and they've been really good with the customer service for the most part. It's just, like I said, it's a little tricky to get a hold of them depending on how you reach them. You know, you got to kind of get in there, make some phone calls and whatnot. But hopefully this problem doesn't happen to you. Hopefully you find out your, your issue within the, like the first 30 days of your headset, if there's any kind of issues um, or if it's just not the headset for you and you don't like it, you could always return it. But I'm gonna tell you right now, if you dial it in as best as I've been dialing it in for what I've been playing, then you're absolutely going to love it. But like same thing with the Black Shark V2 Pros, they were highly rated for uh, two years straight is like the number one headset by majority of tech reviewers and and, and like I would say like 90% of tech reviewers that that was the number one headset gaming headset out there uh, so you know I'm pretty sure this is going to be compete for that too over time I mean obviously there's gonna be some caveats I want to say the v2 the v3 pro would probably be the v3 wired would probably be the the more that that gets that recognition be just because you don't have the battery situation and whatnot so anyways uh before i continue with the razor synapse eqs i know you guys have been waiting for that but uh i'm going to explain my caveats with this headset so so what i've noticed as uh been using it for about two months now i've noticed a couple things uh one i've noticed that when i switch eq profiles uh it seems like the mic will sometimes not carry over the 
uh, microphone feedback to my head, which is what they call, I believe, what is the name of it? It is called the mic monitoring. So sometimes I'll switch over to a different EQ profile when I'm going to a different game. And then sometimes the EQ will feel like it drops. And it's not that it's like an, or not EQ, I'm sorry. It's like the, just the audio, audio drops, like the volume. So when I'm, instead of getting mic monitoring feedback, say at 100, now it feels like I'm getting it back at 80. And it's it still works, it's there, but it's noticeable. And I don't know why it does that. I think it's just a software like bug, but it's not that big a deal, obviously. It doesn't bug me that bad, but it's just something that I wanted to point out specifically. And then obviously uh, another issue too is, I, I don't know if it's like just a weird connection to the PC situation, but I've noticed that when I turn on my PC, sometimes it doesn't recognize the uh, headset plugged in. So simple fix is literally just unplug and plug back in the dongle <laughs> when it's on and then it'll pop up and synapse will recognize it sometimes synapse doesn't recognize it too when i start up synapse and it is on so i will technically just unplug and plug it in the dongle and then all of a sudden it just pulls up very weird don't ask me so <laughs> other than that too the battery life now that was a really big uh, deal for me so i've noticed that like in a in a six hour stream I have to charge it like at least once and i mean just charge it for like a good 20 minutes 30 minutes i could play a game with it um but that's pretty much how fast the battery is dying with the haptics on low by the way because the i'm going to show you guys why i use low but uh low haptics and uh, rgb on obviously as a streamer i do want to show off the rgb on the headset so that's why i wanted to show you guys like when i'm playing whatever you guys could see that but it does cost the uh, effectiveness of the battery life i would say the battery lasts about five hours on a on a, a solid charge without having to charge it um on low haptics and my eq settings so that definitely is not 11 hours and i don't know if that's a battery situation that could be a uh, and that's another thing it could, it could not be just the headset it could be just this specific one headset that i got it could be like a uh, a default or whatever you call it a defect but it's not game breaking it's not killing it's 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 fine it's it works good still and if i want if i really want to have longer audio quality so I don't, it's just the hassle of literally plugging in my cable that's right here to my head if i really wanted that then i would just obviously charge it up so now the last caveat i have for sure is going to be having this plugged in turns off your haptics and they won't turn on so if this is charging while i'm gaming i do not get my haptics and very weird But I don't get my haptics and I don't know what the reason is behind that. I don't get my haptics. Uh, it, it, it's just all it is. It's still the, it's still the same. It feels like having the Black Shark V2s on with audio quality. It still sounds really good. Actually, it sounds a little more compressed or not compressed, but like just like you can't like the audio doesn't leak out. So it feels like it's more like your ears are in the audio more because of the headset style, but uh, still very good audio quality. I like it a lot. And even with it plugged in, it's fine. It just takes away the actual part that i was mentioning which is the immersive haptic senses while you're gaming so it's a little bit of an, an annoyance for sure but is it game breaking or uh anything like that no it's not um overall audio quality and the experience with this headset is very amazing um and if you i mean like i said if you guys want the high with why know a lot of people like wireless and i mean i got this as a gift anyway so uh like i said if you want wireless um, I would recommend maybe just turning the ear, uh, shining ear cups off, unless you're like a streamer or a recording content and you have a camera, then obviously that's a personal uh, choice on you. But uh, me as a streamer, obviously I keep the RGB on. I still like the RGB a lot, looks nice, um, but it is kind of saddening to have to charge it as much as you have to charge it because of battery life. So that's about it. So we're going to go into Razer Synapse now and I'm going to show you guys my EQs and then obviously go from there. So. Okay, so EQs. Okay, so Apex Legends, starting off with the EQ. Uh, haptics on low, volume, 100. Mixer, like all my other videos, like I said, THX Spatial Audio, you want to click it on first, switch it to custom mode. Uh, obviously, you want to use custom mode that you create. So obviously, instead, of, this headset's weird. It doesn't have a custom mode to just do right off the bat. So as a, as a weird little trick to it, you want to actually put it on music mode or movie mode because it unlocks all six or no, sorry, four, five, six, seven, seven channels in the headsets. And then what you want to do is go to custom mode one after it makes the custom mode after you moved it around because obviously it's going to 
turn into a custom mode one is what I'm getting at. And then you want to set up your whatever your game you're playing on that specific profile to whatever your custom mode is and then click it back off. And the reason why is because the Synapse software overlaps the Windows setting. Uh, like I was explaining, uh, Windows setting is THX Spatial Audio. It's unlocking the software through Windows. So it's like using Windows Sonic. If you decide to use Windows Sonic, it is just unlocking the software feature of Windows Sonic, which is Windows Surround Sound to your headset. And it's still gonna be this. So technically you could have Windows Sonic THX Spatial Combo and it's just gonna sound crazy, but you really only need to have Windows utilizing THX Spatial Audio as the source. And then you just set it up, click it off. So that way it doesn't overpower it and you get more of a stereo separation, but with the channels. So it's really, really nice makes it really really good quality bass boost at 100 sound normalization for apex Legends i actually have off um and the reason why oh this is another caveat too i didn't get to talk about i don't know if i've seen a lot of people have this issue but i think it's like a safety feature i think if the frequencies get too high in a, in, a, in, a, in a spike it'll cut the audio out of the headset like turn it off so you just have to turn the headset back on it's very simple it doesn't damage it or anything but it's just because the audio may be too sharp in game i noticed that with sound normalization that it, in game for like sniper shots it was really cutting the audio out only on two snipers and it was the sentinel and uh the craver and i noticed that it just it was very rare with the C craver but it happened a lot with the sentinel so sound normalization i turned off and it actually helped with uh audio being more directional so my eqs because of that which i worked around with this is eight six five seven two one four two three and five and the reason why I bring up the highs a little bit more in this EQ compared to like the Black Shark V2s is because the haptics kind of uh, will will get generate its own type of like feel but audio mix. It's weird. It's not like overpowering to where it's muddled things, but it, it definitely takes over a little bit of the audio. So you want to bring up the highs a little bit more just to kind of get out of that like oomph of the, the haptics taken in sound. You know what I mean? So uh, that's why you'll notice that with these EQs. That's what I figured out so far. Um, but these are not even like really really a final eq like i said this is something for you to try and again like with all my videos i tell you guys to go up one down one up two down two on each frequency just to find your specific ears frequency picking up but this is my baseline i would start at so you start out with this go up one down one up two down two depending on what you're feeling is a little too harsh maybe the bases are a little too harsh for you maybe the highs are a little too harsh for you so you just bring those down or if you need more bass more more highs bring them up simple as that that's how you work it and so the obvious that we got Warzone. so those are the two games i've been playing and right there like i said i i noticed i just switched over to that eq profile and my mic monitoring felt like it dropped about to like 90 percent. so it's not it's still there and it's very it actually makes my voice sound a little clearer like like it sounds i sound more natural in my ears <laughs> but it just dropped the 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 mic monitoring i don't know what that is it's like i said this is a fresh headset so it's definitely got its caveats for sure but i i've had be best experiences with audio with this headset for sure so uh warzone i got bass boost at 100 sound normalization 10 and then my eqs for warzone are eight seven seven eight three three two four five and five now like I said, not finalized. Uh, this is just what I've been rocking for now. And again, you you adjust as where you need it. Um, definitely keep sound organization up to 10 though, because it does kind of make audio a little bit more crisp. It just kind of brings it out. Like directional audio might be better like more cleaner if you turn sound, sound normalization off. However, my experience right now, sound normalization 10 just brings a little bit more life to the game. It just sounds a little better. Um, but again, not, not uh, finalized yet, working on it. So anyways this is the eqs i got so far and then obviously music now music that was weird what oh because my haptics are i just felt like my haptics going off so that's another thing too i want to talk about is like when you have haptics on and you're talking your haptics especially at high they will pick up you talking so instead of this is just for listening to music obviously i have bass boost at 100 sound normalization at 100 um but that's how good the haptics are even then with you talking and it's feeding back to you they, it will literally hear you talking back to it so it's like recording your frequency of your mouth it's insane so um sound normalization 100 bass boost 100 and then i got seven five six seven six four four five four and five now this is brought to life 
music more than it's ever had with any headset so i definitely love it so much um i think i had more of a i think my eq and this is another thing too you could try my eqs from my black shark v2 series because these are both uh dry force titanium drivers so um if you want to test those music eqs with this headset just remember that the haptics are a part of it and also wanted to show you too that these haptics are at high for music because it just gives you the intensity of everything so that's why i wanted to bring that out obviously if it's too much you can turn down a medium and it'll still be a great experience low just feels like it kind of makes the audio like not feel so impactful but it's just again tested with electronic music uh, like rave music and rock music like heavy metal you know stuff like that so or hardcore um but yeah so that's pretty much it um like i said my caveats very simple it's not too big a deal but uh definitely uh would look into that make sure that they get a, a firmware update out i'm actually going to be talking to the insider program and letting them know what i think about the headset and, and what i think they should prove on with the firmware hopefully they will go into it and dial it in um, normally they do talk to they'll talk back to me and they'll, they'll give me responses and stuff so it's cool um obviously too with the mic like i said i will be getting to this same thing with the blackstrike v2 pros if you guys are there for that um but i also recommend when i get this updated i'm getting this updated as soon as possible um uh, keep an eye out for that but with the next video update i'll be updating this um with more eqs of games too so uh definitely you know like i said if you guys want to try to fix something up yourself uh you know just play around with the enhancements play around with the voice gate play around with the uh microphone volume obviously and then play with some of the eqs and just test the frequencies like i said it's just it's all about trial and error and once you get it down you'll find something that works good and people will like you know find somebody to listen to your mic while you're testing it maybe on like um like discord or something or in well in game is really bad i would not use in game audio but definitely like discord is probably the best bet and then just play with it a little bit so uh other than that that's about it now my recommendation for this headset absolutely i, I think one hundred and fifty thousand percent. this is a great headset period it's just got the little caveats that i think a firmware update will fix i don't think it's much more than that um the battery life i i might be kind of screwed on that so if you're if you're wanting this type of headset you're probably better off getting the v3 wired if you don't mind a wired headset but if it has to be a wireless headset you're not going to be disappointed in this headset by all means it's actually a really really good headset Set, and uh i genuinely do enjoy it so it's really really nice um other thing than that too actually when i just went back to the the apex legends eq i think i figured out why it's causing that the mic monitoring to switch back to it i think it has something to do with the eq settings where it's your your voice is picking up a little louder depending on the eq i don't know i think that's because it just sounds like back to fixed when i went back to apex legends i gotta figure that out it's all little quirks and stuff it's like when you think about it, it's like driving a volkswagen like volkswagens they drive so smooth and they run so damn well but at the same time too uh they are very quirky they have a lot of issues that come up um, but they're not like that bad but they have a lot of issues that are just like something you get used to uh razor is kind of one of those things right now where it's like it's improving so much and the quality's there it's just got a little bit of quirky stuff so if you're not one of those guys that's not a fan of of like dialing in and tweaking in a little bit of settings or watching videos to get to like the best experience out of it then it's probably not the headset for you you know or the the mouse or anything so other than that i do recommend this headset 150 thousand percent like i said uh it's an amazing amazing headset best audio experience i've had bar none and the the coolest features too like something you don't find in other headsets rays are doing big things out there but uh like i said the black shark v2 probably just still has a whole holds a place in my heart in terms of like the competitive audio really really nice um but i will be coming up with like you know realistic eq audio and whatnot so uh it's gonna be really really cool so Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Like I said, please, all the support's truly appreciated. And it would mean so much to me, so much. If you guys could please follow, like, and subscribe. Uh, it means the world. It gets the algorithm up, obviously, too. And uh, like I said, I'm just literally 300 away from partner. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. That's all I got for today. We've been recording for 45 minutes, but hopefully I'm going to cut this down nice, cleaner. Uh, hopefully a little quicker, too. We'll, we'll make it a little nice. So. You guys take it easy, have a good one, and enjoy your guys' headset. Or hopefully you guys made a, a conscious decision about a purchase. And you guys have a great day. I'm out of here. Peace out.